Hey everybody, Stephen Garner here, Team Most Awesome, Team Canada. And the board issue I'm going to address today is cavitation. So if you're coming out of those hole shots and stuff and you give it tons of throttle and you feel like it just doesn't have that jam, and it, the engine spins up but you're just not getting anything out of it, it's, uh, it's due to cavitation. And what it is is the seal inside your jet actually needs to be resealed. So I'm going to kind of show you how to uh, remove your jet and uh, how, to, how to address the issue of cavitation. The tool that you're going to need is going to be uh, a 4 mil for these retainers and a 5 mil uh, for, for this right off the drive shaft here, this main retainer. Okay. So you'll just want to get in here and you'll notice that these retainers are actually offset. The reason why they're offset is for balancing. I don't know how necessary it is, but I, I my board came like that offset for, for and they, I was told it was for balancing. So I put them back like that. So just hold on to your drive shaft with your finger and use your thumb and, and break those seals. And then you can just loosen it up. And as soon as you get it loose enough that uh, you can move it freely and it can slide back and forth on the shaft, then you're, you're loose enough. And then the next one I'm going to do is this five millimeter one right here. It's the same kind of thing. You just want to uh, uh, break it free and loosen it off a bit. And you'll see that it's loose. You can actually visibly see on the side that it's not uh, tight anymore. And then you'll just want to take your time and slowly pull back on that. It does have rubber retaining uh, retainers in it to absorb the shock off the engine. There we go. So you can see how it's just sliding back now. Some guys use screwdrivers and actually get in there and pry it, uh, pry it back. I don't do that. And the reason why I don't is because this is just carbon and um, I don't want to mar it up and all that kind of stuff. And it's really not that bad to, uh, to move it back by hand. So those are those two. And then you have this third one. You can actually reach in and, and uh, turn the shaft from underneath or even turn it from in here now or even grab onto that retainer and turn the retainer because it's not attached to the engine anymore so there's very little resistance so you just turn that last one and then do the same thing and break it free there we go and this back one's a four mil as well it's it's identical to the one right off the this other little one there you go slide them forward a bit so now everything between that rear bearing and the engine is all free floating. So that way when we pull out that rod, these will just fall into this engine cavity and uh, they won't be attached to the rod anymore. Um, inside here, uh, we'll, we'll look at that after, but inside there is where your little rubber mounts are that, that uh, case these, these fins off the back of the engine. So let's just turn one over really quick. There we go. I don't know if that's in the shot. Let's move it down a bit. You can see I have that ride plate off already. You guys who are seeing Mona for the first time, you guys probably haven't seen the stripes underneath her, but it's pretty cool, eh? Anyways, you can see that rear drive shaft coming out and going into your, your jet. Um, there's a couple different ways to, to take these off. The one line, this your your cooling line for your engine, will actually run all the way back inside the board and up into the engine. So you're not going to be able to pull that one like out of the hull itself. So what you do is you you press this in and you press in a little bit on the actual hose and when you have that that pushed in you can pull it back and out and it releases. You can see a little bit of oil in there. I, I lubricated uh, some stuff and it came through. Anyways and then on this side, because this is just fit right into your hole, you can either pull it out from there or you can do the exact same thing. You can push this, this ring in, push on this, and then pull it out. Nice and simple. Then right here you have these two, two retaining bolts. Um, I don't have a washer on this one even. And the reason why I don't is just because I had had it apart already just to uh, because I was changing this out and then I decided to make a video on it. So I just screwed it back in to show you guys. But that's also a five mil. 
And these are just for the strap that holds the jet in place. This is the one. And the two. Set those off to the side so you don't lose them. I'll have to find what I did with that washer. And then uh, what I like to do is I like to look down the impeller hole and see if there's a spot where light's coming through. Because this right here, this seal, it should be silicone. And this is where um, that cavitation is happening. Is when the water is getting sucked in, it's, it's being pulled and it's going through this seal here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find the spot where it's coming through. And by looking down the board, either way, you can look down in either direction, you can actually see light through that seal. So then what I do is I take just regular old dental floss. You can also just uh, sometimes depending on how big the hole is and everything and how good your floss is, you can actually just feed it through by like pushing with your fingers, which is what I just did right there. Cool. And then what you do is you wrap the floss around your fingers a couple times and you just work it back and forth and you cut out all that old silicone with the dental floss and you can see your dental floss gets chewed up and stuff. That's okay because if it snaps, you can just grab another piece and you take your time and you work that the best that you can and you'll get to the point where you'll be able to like to, to move it by hand a little bit and you can see how that moves there by hand and then you can like move it back and forth a little bit and work it around then what i usually do is i take a wrench and i go between the engine the drive shaft itself and uh, here, let's see if I can get that in shot. I know it's in there. Turn that engine over a little bit. So I go and I take the wrench and I put it on the actual drive shaft and against the drive shaft and the engine. And I push. And I, I break that seal and I push it through a decent amount from this end. Now I can put this back on here so I don't lose it. It doesn't fall into the engine cavity. Okay. Turn one back over really quick. And you can see how it, it uh, came out. Then what you have to do is you have to watch because you have to the diameter in here actually gets narrower because of your exhaust port. So you actually have to lift it up now that you're free from that hull, from the hull. You lift it up just a little bit and pull it back. And then those uh, those retainers inside the board are going to fall out. So I'll just put my hand underneath so that when I pull these out, I don't drop them on the glass table. But then you just slowly pull this back. There's one, there's two. And you can see those retainers that uh, tension up the, the drive shaft. Now there's nothing holding the drive shaft in place. And so I just slowly work it up by hand. It gets a little bit snug because, um, because of the angle, because this actually does come up a bit. And so it's, it's kind of uh, on an angle into that bearing there, to that rear bearing. So you just have to be nice and slow and gentle and careful with it. Well, I could take it out the rest of the way, but in reality, if, if that's the only problem and it's just cavitation, um, that'll give you enough room that you can clean up all that old silicone here around the inside of the, the board. And then you can clean up all the old silicone on this. And then just uh, what I like to do is I, I like to apply some tape back 
on, on this part where you're actually going to see. So when this is all silicone together, I can remove that tape and you have a nice clean line and it doesn't look all sloppy. And I like to put tape on the inside of the impeller as well so that uh, when I close it all up, there's not silicone on the inside of the impeller as well. And then I do the same thing on the inside ring where the water comes into the jet so that uh, I don't have any silicone there. And then when I'm done, pull off the tape from those three areas and it should look nice and clean and I should have no more uh, cavitation issues. I'll put that back in right now really quick. Back and forth, nice and slow. You can imagine that there's a silicone bead all inside there. Something you can do, it'll make the cavitation issue happen a little bit more often, but you won't have to struggle so hard um, getting this pump out is if you take a little bit of oil and you put it on your hand, after you put that that uh, that silicone in there, just run a little bit of oil on your finger and just like, just to have a little bit of a, a film of oil on this. Now when you slide it in, it'll still adhere, to, but when you try to get it out, it'll be a little bit easier. So depending on how much you use your board, how much uh, you're gonna service it. It's not so bad here, but when you're in places like, uh, like urban city riding and stuff where there's garbage and, and sticks and stuff in, in the in the water. Um, you get crap into your peller and, and you can break those fins. They're pretty hard. Your, your engine will stall out first before you break a fin on your impeller. But um, that being said, it, it, it can happen. So anyways, work that back in. And then take your time lining it up. push it in and then you're done then you remove the tape from those three areas you should have a nice clean impeller there you go if you're having cavitation issues that's how you pull your impeller if you want to change out that that rear bearing it's the exact same technique just pull this all the way out and then uh, you just push the bearing out nice and simple and if you want to put that bearing back in you just slide it onto your shaft and you can actually use those retainers, these things, to, uh, to knock the bearing back into place. And when you are putting these back in, obviously uh, you should put these in before you slide the jet pump back in. So maybe I should show you that. So now you can't get these in because that shaft's back in place. So the key is to make sure that when you're putting that back on that you put this in at the same time. But obviously I didn't seal it up. I didn't put the silicone in. And so I still have to pull it out and do it again. And when you put these back in, you always want the fat end facing the front of the board and the small end facing the back. What will happen if you don't is um, this fat end will actually rub on that rear bearing and it'll mar up the bearing, it'll mar up the housing and uh, you'll have issues there. So always make sure you have the skinny end facing the back, have them offset for, uh, for balancing purposes. And, um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. When you torque those up, torque them up reasonably well. And I got another one of those that I can show you the inside of. So this is the piece. This is this piece right here that uh, is that retainer. And you can see this carbon fiber sleeve can actually slide right off. And then there's these rubber, white rubber inserts that go inside here. And the engine connects to the other side so I can, that's pretty much it so when you're t we, when you do take this apart inspect those white rubber pieces you can see I changed mine out already so the ones in the board are brand new and then I got another set right here that I pulled off last time and when you're when you're changing the rubbers the easiest way to do it is by putting this carbon retainer on first and then just folding these and then sliding them in You can see how those sit in there. Nice and simple. Five millimeter bolt on the side. What happens is when you tighten that, it closes that gapping. It prevents it from sliding back and forth. Cool. Well, I hope that helped. Have a good one. Talk to you later. Um.